And now, here's Tom Sparks in a conversation with Dan Healy. In parts one and two of our conversation with dead sound man Dan Healy, he discussed the legendary early 70s wall of sound concert system and the special audio effects he uses today. In this concluding segment, Dan describes the evolution of the deadhead taping section. I love the tapers. I have personally nothing against it. As far as I'm concerned, philosophically, the music belongs to the audience. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a proponent of the tapers as long as, the, as long as it doesn't impair the overall audience's appreciation of the show. Is that why the taper section was sectioned off the way it is now? Yeah, the tapers got uh, an inflated version of their own importance for a while there. And uh, they were beginning to lean on non-tapers who had seats that they wanted and stuff. And so it got, there got to be a little bit of stress there. And the, uh, my personal bottom line is, is that I don't care who does what at a show as long as everybody else doesn't have to get sucked into it that may not want to. If you can go to the show and do, do your own thing and not hurt anybody and not get anybody's way, then I don't care what you do, you know. But uh, when you start throwing people out of their seats who maybe stood in line for 10 hours to get their ticket and stuff, that's not good and that's not constructive and that's not what the tapers are there for, you know. So I, one thing led to another in the concept of the taper section. It was like either, either prohibit band taping altogether or organize it. So it kind of got put on me, so I flashed on the, the uh, taper section idea, and so far it's been working. I think it's worked out great. It got tapers out of everyone's hair. Is there any chance of getting a soundboard feed back to the taper so we can eliminate microphones too? Well, I've done that occasionally. I, uh, I had a little stereo transmitter that I used to, real low power one, but real extremely high audio quality that I used to do shows. Um, and I, I may, may do that in the future, I may not, I don't know, but that's been done. You know, if you bring a little FM tuner like a ghetto blast, you tune in this little frequency and you can get a direct feed right off. For instance, the summer shows last year, as I recall you were doing that. Yep, I did that for those shows, yes. Dan also commented on the future of concert sound. The future is going to be in computers, computerization of the, uh, of the processing of the sound. There's a lot of new things on the horizon. And within the next couple of years, there's going to be radical changes in the sound system. And I don't know exactly what they're all going to be, and it's not particularly secret, but only because it hasn't really been completed or uh, thought out all the way yet. But it's going to involve computers, and it's going to be a form of real-time processing that compensates for the changes in the atmospheric conditions and changes in the weather, changes in between an uh, empty hall and a large hall. It's going to make the music more uniform make it more, more, more smooth it out, even smoother. And if we want Jerry turned up, what kind of signal should we give you? I don't know. I think uh, you put your left thumb on your right eye tooth and scratch your butt or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time, Dan. We appreciate you talking to DTV. Yeah, good luck. <laughs>